Section 2.8 is going to discuss inverse functions. Now, my goal for you in this section is that you understand what an inverse function is and does, and that you'll be able to find and calculate inverse functions. You should also know a little bit about their graphs, how the graph of an inverse function looks in comparison to the graph. Now, the, the function that we're going to start with is something I saw in a book a little while ago. So for all you CSI fans, you know, where they're... You know, the cops are investigating, you know, an accident or a crime, etc. Um, one of the functions that you could use is a function that models how far, how fast the car was traveling versus the distance of its skid mark. So that's going to depend on a lot of things, depending on the condition of the road, the cement, asphalt, or dirt, if it's icy, rainy, etc. But uh, let's choose kind of a, a typical value. For, for such a situation, in which case the distance of the skid mark is going to be your velocity divided by 30 times this coefficient of friction. And uh, I think I chose uh, cement for this particular one. So across the x-axis is your speed. And then on the y-axis is the distance of your skid. Now that's, that's well and good for, for us when we can just sit here and plug in values. And if you plug in some values, plug in 10, 20, etc., you get these y values. But suppose you're trying to reconstruct an accident, trying to figure out what happened, how fast was the driver traveling. Keep in mind this is our miles per hour and then uh, the distance of the skid. We don't have this, do we? It's not what we have. Um, what we have is this. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to interchange the roles for x and y. I'd like to be able to put in this and get out this. So instead of dealing with the function, I need to deal with something called the inverse function. And the inverse function is going to interchange those roles. So my input, I'd like it to be the distance of the skid, what do you suppose I'm going to get for my output though? What do I want here for the y column? The miles per hour. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So I need to interchange those roles. Now if I can do that, if I interchange those roles, then great, this is going to be my inverse function. Now let's take a look at what happens when we do that in terms of our graph. So the graph of our function f of x is, let's see, let me find a better marker than that. This one. There's the graph of our function. The graph of our inverse looks like this. And that's simply because you're interchanging x and y coordinates. And when you do that, that has a nice effect on your graph. Basically what's going to happen is that your graph of your function and your graph of inverse are going to be mirror images around this line y equals x. And that's simply because you're interchanging values of x and y. Instead of having a point at say uh, 10 and 4.1, you're going to have a point at 4.1 and 10. So it's just going to interchange those two values. That's one of the conclusions that I want you to have based on this, this handout, is that the graph of F and the graph of its inverse are mirror images of each other around the line y equals x. So a nice visual interpretation of what the graph of a function and the graph of its inverse are going to look like. So the question then is, all right, well, how do I find 
the inverse function itself. I mean, it's great that if I have this table that I can interchange the x and y coordinates, but how do I find the inverse function itself? Well, here's a little list of instructions right here, finding the inverse. And let's apply those to a nice simple function to start with. Problem number 50, 7 minus 5x. So problem number 50, f of x equals 7 minus 5x. The first step is to replace f of x by y. So you get y equals 7 minus 5x. The second step kind of models what we did with our work um, up above. We're going to interchange x and y. So wherever there's an x, we write a y. Wherever there's a y, you write an x. Then you need to solve for y, because we want to get y by itself. We want to know what y is, not something relating to x. So I guess what I could do is I could move, uh, well, let's do it this way. I'm going to move the 5x over here. Just give me the 5y over here and the x over here. You might ask why I'm doing it that way. Well, what happens to the minus 5y term when I bring it to the left-hand side? Good, it's positive. So it's kind of a fancy way of getting rid of that negative without having to divide by a negative. So I get 5y equals 7 minus x. One last thing to do to solve here, divide by 5. So I get y equals 7 minus x over 5. The last step in finding the inverse is to actually use the inverse notation. f negative 1 of x is 7 minus x over 5. I do want to see that inverse notation. It's something I want you to be comfortable with. One thing that you should be aware of is that this inverse notation has nothing to do with the reciprocal. Nothing whatsoever. If you look at the graphs of this and the reciprocal function, which should be 1 over 7, excuse me, 1 over 7 minus 5x, that would be this, f of x to the negative first. These have nothing to do with each other, nothing whatsoever. This is the inverse function, and that's what I'll be looking for. So let's do one, come on, maybe two examples of finding the inverse, and then I should call it a day for today. We'll start with problem number 52, or we'll continue with problem 52, I should say. f of x is 3x cubed plus 8. So, Keegan, what's our first step? Put it to uh, y equals. Good. So, y equals 3x cubed plus 8. And what? Switch, the... switch, switch x and y. x equals 3x cubed plus 8, or 3y cubed plus 8. Solve for y. What kind of steps do I need to do to solve for y? What would you do first? Yeah, I'd subtract 8 from both sides. So x minus 8 equals 3y cubed. Good. Let's not make Victoria do all the work. Divide by 3. Good. So divide by 3 and then take the cube root. So the cube root of x minus 8 over 3 equals y. Don't forget that last step. Last step is to write that using function notation, and that is f inverse of x equals the cube root of x minus 8 over 3. Okay. Let's take a quick look at that and see if uh, the graphs line up like we think they should. So I'm going to do that in decimals. So uh, 
I will in a second. Um, so let's see. Y equals 3x cubed plus 8. And let me kind of zoom out a little bit on that one. And now this is kind of cool. It's something you can do in decimal, which you can't really do in terms of your graphing calculator. Your graphing calculator, you have to have x equals something. But I don't in decimals. So all I'm going to do is interchange x and y like that. Um, let's see. And there you go. There's my two graphs. They're mirror images of each other around the line y equals x. In fact, you can put in the line y equals x and see that pretty clearly. So nice. All right, let me go back as promised. Do you have a question or you just need to finish copy? Okay. Yeah, we took the cube root to get rid of the cube over here. So I took the cube root on both sides. So last one, problem number 56. f of x is 3x over x minus 2. This one's got a little bit of a trick in it, so I'm happy to solve this one for you, at least uh, this one in class. If we interchange x and y, I get x equals 3y over y minus 2. And you might notice because we have y's in a couple places that that's going to make this a little bit more challenging. I suggest that you multiply both sides by y minus 2 and get x times y minus 2 and on the right hand side this is going to cancel equals 3y. But it looks like it's going to be challenging to get y by itself. The first step, though, is to distribute the x. The next step is to get the y's on the same side. And I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to take the 2x, move it to the right side, and the 3y, move it to the left side. That kind of brings all the y terms together. xy minus 3y equals 2x. I still don't have y by itself, but I'm getting closer. At least they're on the same side. Factor out the y. It leaves behind x minus 3 equals 2x. Thank you. Divide by x minus 3, y equals 2x over x minus 3, or better yet, f inverse of x equals 2x over x minus 3. Okay. So let me just give you a couple problems from this section to look at in homework. We didn't do too much, so I'm not going to give a whole lot. Why don't you try problems uh, 49 through 57. Homework, 49 through 57. Wow, five problems. Ooh. See ya. Just the oh, just the odds. <laughs>